It's time to spike up our hair and get ready to fly again as we dig through our 90s nostalgia crate to uncover the tragic true story of Mark McGrath and his Sugar Ray bandmates. When Sugar Ray released their debut album, Lemonade and Brownies, in 1994, it didn't exactly go smoothly. A one-and-a-half star review from the Los Angeles Times, for example, called them out for giving a shout-out to Mike Tyson, who'd been convicted of rape three years earlier. The band would catapult to superstardom later in the decade, but they eventually came down hard. Their 2003 album, In the Pursuit of Leisure, was a dismal enough failure that it made frontman Mark McGrath realize that he'd better find a backup job as a TV host. The band was dropped by their record label in 2006, and they wouldn't put out another album for three years after that. By the time Music for Cougars was released, McGrath told Billboard, We have realistic views of how the music industry is today. I know people aren't sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for a Sugar Ray record, but that wasn't the point. It was purely because we love to make music. A 1999 Los Angeles Times article wasn't very kind to Sugar Ray, as it called their onstage behavior impulsively idiotic and labeled their music frat rock and nanity. But buried in all the hate was an interesting observation that Mark McGrath's onstage persona was an act and one that he hoped would keep anyone from noticing that he had no idea what he was doing. When the rest of the band pitched a song they'd been working on, Fly, McGrath was so annoyed by it that he threatened to quit the band. But his outrage wasn't necessarily because he hated the music, and he eventually realized that he'd been dealing with something much more difficult than differing musical tastes. As he explained to Rolling Stone, we were playing hard stuff, and I said, I quit but I didn't realize what was happening. These guys were learning how to play better, heaven forbid, and I just wanted to scream and yell because I was scared to be on stage in the first place. I think we're in trouble. Should we just quit? Mark McGrath is well aware of the fact that he played a big role in making spiky hair with highlights part of a cultural moment. As he told GQ in 2019, he was still styling himself that way decades later, but only now it was to cover up his gray hair. In the same interview, he also acknowledged the relentless criticism of his band's music. The title of Sugar Ray's 1999 album, 1459, was even a nod to the idea that they should enjoy their 15 minutes of fame because that's all they were going to get. Rather than defending their musical prowess, McGrath has been consistently self-deprecating, as he explained to GQ. It bothers my bandmates and it bothers other people around me that I kind of put it down so much, but I just think we got so lucky. But at the end of the day, it's also about results. We did sell 10 million records. We did have two number one songs. We did write four top 10 songs, and I'm very proud of that. You can never take away that accomplishment. He offered the same sentiment to Screen Rant in 2022 when he said, You can call me whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You can not like the band, but I'm very proud of our accomplishments. Going viral isn't always a good thing. And when an expletive-filled video started circulating of Mark McGrath threatening fans outside of a club in the late 90s, it certainly wasn't a great look. The catalyst for the whole thing was someone shouting sugar gay from the crowd, and everything went off the rails from there. As McGrath revealed to Screen Rant in 2022, he was leaving a bar with a group of friends who happened to be gay. He noted, I was walking outside, and there the vitriol and homophobic statements that were coming out of everybody just shocked me. It was 2 o'clock in the morning, and I was just drunk enough when someone inserted Sugar Gay for me to get upset, because I just had it. McGrath clarified that it wasn't the shout of Sugar Gay that set him off, but rather the intent behind it, because he realized that it wasn't meant in a positive way. He ended up going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bystander, and he later admitted that it wasn't one of his finer moments, as he explained. Look, I reacted like a moron. Make fun of me for the things I said, but just watch the words sometimes, because words still hurt in this day and age. In December 2015, Stone Temple Pilots and Velvet Revolver frontman Scott Weiland died from prolonged excessive drug use. Upon his passing, Mark McGrath revealed during an appearance on the Allegedly podcast, he was a friend of mine, and I wasn't shocked. McGrath had seen Weiland just a few weeks before he died, and he described the singer as a shell of himself. They hung out and had a few drinks, and Wyland even went on stage to perform at the wedding they were attending, but McGrath could tell that something was very wrong. McGrath witnessed all of this unfolding over the course of his friend's life, and he was also heartbreakingly candid about the fact that this was a lifestyle that shouldn't have been emulated. As he put it, it's the old cliche, you can't help someone who doesn't want to help himself. Scott was resigned to his belief, his heroes all went through their thing, and I think he was romanced by the whole idea of addiction. In 2021, Mark McGrath spoke with Page Six about what it was like being one of the 90s rock stars who were still around and performing. 
Simply put, he had survived the decade when so many of his peers hadn't. As he put it, I was in a rock and roll band and I gave myself a long leash to hang myself and I went right to the end of that leash. McGrath was fortunate enough to be surrounded by a support system that reined him in when things got a little dicey. He was also grateful for the fact that some of the more dangerous pitfalls were temptations that he just didn't have any interest in, like the heroin addictions that claimed a number of his fellow musicians. As he explained, I'm a guy who likes to get up to get down, you know what I'm saying? So I was able to navigate those murky waters, and Sugar Ray saw their fair share of murky waters. When McGrath appeared on the Allegedly podcast, he noted that the best job in the world for someone struggling with addiction is a rock star. As he put it, you can hide it all day long you can hide it for a long time. Even though Sugar Ray continued to release albums into the 2000s, they're still known as a 90s band, and Mark McGrath is fine with that, as he insisted to screen rant in 2022. Let me tell you something, I don't want to hear your new stuff either. I don't want to hear Sugar Ray's new stuff. You know what I mean? I want to hear the hits. Was I born with any sort of talent? No, you could argue I still don't have it. Back in 2015, McGrath released a self-financed solo EP called Summertime's Coming, as he explained to Florida Today, he was grateful that he wasn't focused on making money and that he could just be happy with the record he made. Otherwise, he would have been sorely disappointed. He's also been candid about the strange role that nostalgia plays in the band's continued life, though it took some effort to get over the idea that he was performing at the sort of gigs that felt like a county fair. As he told Mass Live in 2019, I think music is the only profession where we look at nostalgia as, for some reason, maybe something that's sad or less than. If you look at athletes for what they've done, we look at them positively. Once you stop trying to fight the nostalgia, it's a pretty good ride. Sugar Ray emerged during an era that was a bit of a sweet spot for the music industry, and Mark McGrath has been candid about how things have changed since, and not necessarily for the better. As he explained to Showbiz Cheat Sheet in 2021, I'm not saying we're anywhere near the grunge greats, but Nirvana, those bands opening the door led to alternative music, which became a whole variety of different things. We found our own lane, but grunge definitely helped us get signed. I'd be lying if I said differently. The phenomenon of Nirvana let every major label sign every band if you could walk and talk and had a, had a Les Paul. But nothing lasts forever, and McGrath has openly lamented how the industry has changed since the 90s. For one thing, he's not a fan of the instant on-demand accessibility of music and the lack of a connection between people and songs, as he explained to Florida Today in 2015. People used to go buy a record because they wanted something tangible. They wanted to see it, feel it, touch it, and play it. Now, they download a song off the internet and might forget they had it until they are going down the street and have their device on shuffle and the song comes on. I miss the tangible side of the business, and it's a real art that seems gone. Sugar Ray may be alive and well more than two decades after they initially hit the airwaves, and they may be still touring and releasing music, although the lineup has changed. But those changes may not exactly have been voluntary, which was clear during a 2013 lawsuit. That was when Sugar Ray's former drummer Stan Fraser and former bassist Murphy Cargus sued Mark McGrath and guitarist Rodney Shepard. The court documents made it clear that it was mostly McGrath they had a problem with. Their complaints included claims that they never actually quit the band, but were instead pushed out. They also claimed that Sugar Ray's licensing agreements were renegotiated without them. The list of grievances was extensive. The claims included McGrath demanding $10,000 per appearance and first-class plane tickets while everybody else flew economy, and that he formed a shell company to increase his own profits. The former members also took issue with McGrath's social media posts, claiming that he'd repeatedly insulted them and their contributions, while lauding Sugar Ray as a world-class band after their departure. The result of the suit hasn't been publicly disclosed, but ultimately the band continued without Fraser and Cargus. As long as I got this guy by my side, he's one of the most talented musicians in the world. Mark McGrath has made it clear that performing in front of audiences who saw Sugar Ray live the first time around is the band's bread and butter. But in 2019, he got candid about the fact that he didn't know how much longer he was going to be able to keep performing, as he revealed to the Daily Mail. I'm deaf now. I cannot hear anymore. It's been years and years of being on the road and being two feet in front of cymbals and drums. So high frequencies. I can't hear anymore. It's scary, because my job is hearing. Ear protection has come a long way since Sugar Ray's heyday, but McGrath has dragged his feet when it comes to actually using them. Decades of performing without them have made it hard to transition, though he's well aware of the fact that he's going to need to do precisely that if he wants to remain in top form. As he admitted, you can't repair your hearing. Once it goes, it goes. You can hope to stop the damage. It's absolutely a worry of mine. 
McGrath also noted that he wasn't immune to other age-related health issues, as he cited problems with his knees and back, while also lamenting that there's no escaping the drudgery of real life. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.